two episodes of Concept Limbo in a row. What's going on? Well, the last one was rather well received and I'm feeling generous, so don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Concept Limbo is a series where I look at stuff that isn't in Rust but could be if the right people thought it was a good idea. Just remember, everything I show you here is just that, an idea, and your job's to make a noise about it in the comments. Think of it as a free therapy session. Just like last time, all of this episode's concepts are from the community, mostly that storm drain of misery known as the Playrust subreddit. From whence today I have for you, planes, glue, and Skeletor's pajamas. But first, missions are nearly here, and there's a treasure one of sorts coming. But what if Rust did a sea of thieves and added actual buried treasure? Because who doesn't love a bit of the old pirate GPS? It's not a very well hidden treasure if you slap a literal X on the ground of course, especially one that moves when you try to dig it up, so obviously there would be more to it. No extra information about this idea on the post apart from the picture, but as usual there was some evidence of positive IQ in the comments. What if you could buy treasure maps from the bandit camp, perhaps with several potential dig locations on them, only one of which would be valid, or maybe some kind of map or snapshot even of where to dig could be found in random bottles on the beach. You could either investigate these yourself or sell them on to other treasure hunters. As some pointed out, if buried treasures were like small stashes, these could be found in other ways, perhaps by hackers. So how would you prevent that? Well, I'd say it would have to be handled differently and only spawn when found with the correct tool. Maybe, as the picture shows, you'd need a shovel to get to the booty and make it appear. Interestingly, shovels were officially concepted a few years ago as this image shows, but oh, what's that on the end of the kayak paddle? Wouldn't be too much of a stretch to let us dig with that too, would it? But what should be in a rust mystery box? And what treasures do you think would be worth the time and effort to go digging for? Let me know below. Next, planes. But first, this is you. You want to express your creative side and make videos for the YouTubes. But the thought of having to fart around with a million knobs and switches holds you back. You want the fast and dirty route. I mean, clean. Yes, you want a clean but powerful interface. So you want... Filmora 10. Filmora 10 is packed with everything you need for professional video editing but wrapped up in an intuitive and sexy package. Drag and drop tracks, apply tons of built-in effects and presets, and handle stuff like working with green screens with ease. You won't need to spend years learning loads of buttons and settings and fiddly bits. You'll be slapping together epic productions in the time it takes to bake a small pie. Filmora 10 now even comes with AR stickers that motion track to your face and AI portraits which can remove backgrounds without even having to use a green screen. Also, for a limited time, you can get up to 42% off the latest themed resource packs, plus some hefty discounts off Filmora 10 itself and a variety of bundles. The software is free to try before you buy, though, with a watermark, and you just have to click on the link in the description below to give it a go. So why not take Filmora 10 for a test drive and see what it can do for you today? Back to the video and chocks away for something that's been suggested a number of times, Rust Planes, because every Everyone wants a form of transport that you need a 15 foundation runway just to use. Okay, for people who live by roads or the airfield, I guess, but it'll probably never be added because it's not a boat. Unless. Unless it was a seaplane, which could solve both issues. This particular post envisioned two types, though. A simple two-man plane with front and rear guns and the ability to drop three types of bomb, and a larger four-seater with a ball turret underneath and a greater ammo capacity. I can only really see them being useful for dropping bombs on people, though. It's not like you can land on a roof or pop to the bandit camp in one. You might as well just lob some C4 from a chopper, unless said bombs were really devastating, which would then probably be deemed as OP and nerfed into oblivion. <laughs> we know how this stuff goes. People still seem to like the idea though, and there's always the threat of adding parachutes and skydiving on the roadmap which could make them more useful, but let me know whether you think planes could ever work, and if so, how. New procedural map types are next, and what if instead of the mostly square with a couple of innie and outy bits type of maps we get from seeds, you could specify a Pangaea type? Continents, Fractal, or Archipelago. I must admit, the Archipelago style appeals to me most, but I imagine this would be a right royal headache in the arse to make work with procedural generation, especially as everything's been designed and balanced to work so far on a single squarish landmass. It's a nice idea, but personally I think this is more in the realm of the custom map-making community, at least for the foreseeable future. 
the couple of crafting quality of life concepts now and I remember seeing this one back in 2019 because Gary liked it on Twitter. It centred around the idea of being able to create preset groups of items for batch crafting, assuming you had the materials on you, etc. I thought it was a pretty good idea too though and nothing at all to do with any subliminal messaging. More recently, from the beginning of this year, comes the next idea to be able to use materials and components in your TC or owned loot boxes to craft without having to put them in your inventory first. Now I can see from the post that the motivation for this is convenience, but as some replies pointed out, it could be a bit too game changing when it comes to raid defence. For example, what if you could magically pull items from loot boxes that you can't reach during a raid? There would obviously have to be limitations. Personally, I'd have this only usable within your TC radius and block you from being able to do so if you're currently being raided. Another possibility would be to only allow you to do it at a workbench that was linked by a series of pneumatic tubes to the storages that you wanted to pull from. I know Helk doesn't like things that are too magical, and I like the idea of seeing things whizzing along tubes to a manufacturing site, but that might start getting complex. Let me know in the comments how you would handle this if you think it's a good idea. This next one got dark quickly in the comments. In fact, it started out pretty dark, but quite timely with a new Matrix film on the horizon. If you die in the game, you die in real life because the client cannot live without the server. I just love how this one's phrased. I think Facebook should add this so the game becomes slightly more difficult. It would make you think before you act and make the game more interesting, to be honest. Slightly more difficult. I'm not sure how this would be organized. Would the team have to do it? I can just imagine the dev blog after this feature was introduced. Well, we didn't get any development work done this month, but the good news is we managed to murder 3 million people. This is something that'll have to wait until we actually get the Matrix, I think. Unless. In the previous episode, I spoke about the final event, an idea to spice up the latter part of a rust wipe that could work, maybe but I think would need a fair amount of tweaking. Something more mundane, but nevertheless I thought an interesting concept was some end game uses for bones and some early game cloth ideas. First of all, as this post points out, there's not much use for bone past the early game, and so there's not really any incentive to keep skeletons in your closet. What if you could later on use bones in special grenades or shells? Perhaps some more decorative features? Some bone meal fertilizer might be an option. Thanks, Minecraft. Or the suggestion I liked the most was bone broth, which could be made in the mixing table. Talking of which, how about glue? That's not very funny. Slant you. Glue is actually an unused component in the item menu and has been stuck there since the component system was introduced nearly five years ago. That's pretty strong stuff. Maybe it's something that will be used in future, perhaps in modular weapons or something. Remember them? What about even some tier 2 or 3 bone armor, such as in this post from a couple of years ago, for those of you who like to wear something a bit humorous? Codpiece optional. Another suggestion made was for more ways to farm cloth early game. <laughs> We've all been there, servers picked clean of the stuff. What would make sense would be some kind of farmable cloth node, like a bag of cloth, or perhaps a large balloon-shaped cloth node. Can't think of what form that would take. It's on the tip of my brain. I mean, these things do just decay anyway if you leave them mm -hmm. hanging around the landscape, but I guess if it were possible, it would mean a rebalance of resources would be necessary and your outdoor spawn points would be very much subject to change. Let me know what you think to this one. Lastly, selling power. And by that, I don't mean a dominant economic position. I mean actually selling power to people who need it. You've seen those big clans with a billion wind turbines. You can't be using all of that or if they could sell the excess on to smaller nearby bases. For a price, of course. One way, possibly, would be via a power distribution unit that would function similar to a vending machine and which the owner could plug their own generated power into. They could then set a rate for rust watts, either scrap or something else that could be received from players plugging into the outputs to pay for the power. Wires leading from base to base might be a bit tricky to render depending on where they are in relation to each other, so alternatively perhaps the receiving base could instead just have a meter deployable that they could link up with a code and used to pay for electricity wirelessly. 
Subject to range, of course. I could see this being very useful for small clans and solos, but it could also add a new social dynamic. What if you're relying on someone for power and it cuts out? What if they're being raided? Would you help defend them to preserve your own power supply? Would you raid someone who was a regular customer? Would it draw players in a locality together by giving them a hard-coded symbiotic relationship? Could you knock out power in a whole area by destroying just one base? I think out of all the concepts in this vid, this is the one I'd be most interested in seeing explored, but what do you think? Please let me know down below as always. If you've enjoyed this extra slice of concept limbo, then pummel the like and subscribe buttons. You can now support me directly on YouTube with channel memberships or via Patreon, or even just nab yourself a subject to change. Mug or shirt, up to you. Links below, also to my social media where you can stay up to date with my content. I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. This video is powered by AWDIT's producer range of workstation PCs, available now at awdit.co.uk. Subject to range.